Well, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am glad to be with you, even if in this, this virtual sense. But it's good to be here. It's good to be with you in this way until we can meet again face to face. And that will happen. Will you pray with me? Mighty God, pour out your power and strength upon each of us. Grant us the nourishment that we need to receive your word today. May your presence fill our lives and carry us forth, preparing us to be your people and equipping us to do your work in this world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. The scripture that I'm going to share with you this morning is a familiar story. It comes to us from the 14th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, verses 13 through 21. Hear now the good news from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus heard about John, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place all by himself. When the crowds learned of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion for them and healed those who were sick. That evening, his disciples came and said to him, This is a desert, an isolated place, and it's getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, There's no need to send them away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here except five loaves of bread and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. He ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves of bread and the two fish, looked up to heaven, blessed them, and broke the loaves apart, gave them to his disciples. Then the disciples gave them to the crowds. Everyone ate until they were full, and they filled 12 baskets with the leftovers. About 5,000 men, plus women and children, had eaten. This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, my wife, Cindy, and I, we like to go out to eat. We do. It, it's fun. It's just something that well, that we like to do together. Sometimes it's fancy, sometimes not so much. And sometimes when, you know, we go to a, what we call a sit-down restaurant, as opposed to like a burger joint or some other fast food place, um, sometimes we'll get an appetizer. And, it, you know, that varies too. Sometimes it's just, you know, chips and salsa or, or maybe onion rings or some of those little boneless chicken wing things or something like that, you know, if we're in the mood for an appetizer before the meal. And the appetizers are generally pretty tasty, and some are quite fancy, in fact. And while they do give a sort of a preview as to the quality of what else we can expect at that particular restaurant, the truth is that the appetizers are not the main reason why we're there. The appetizers simply serve to, to sort of whet our appetite, to, to tide us over while we wait for the main meal which, of course, is the primary reason why we went to that particular restaurant. So, through the appetizers, we're given a little preview of what is to come, and now we're not going to starve to death while we wait for what we most want to get there. Okay, it's cool. We can all understand that concept well enough, I should think. Only by now, I suppose in this talking about food, some of us may well be getting distracted into thinking about, well, what would I like to eat? And this talk of food's just making me hungry. I get that. So let's move on, you and I. What does all of this talk of appetizers have to do with us, with you and me, right here, right now, right smack dab in the middle of the biggest pandemic that we've ever known? What does it have to do with us? Quite a bit, really. So bear with me. Bear with me and we'll, we'll get there. As you recall, 
in our in our gospel lesson, we revisited the familiar story of the feeding of the 5,000. It's a familiar story in our Bible, and there's a reason why that story is familiar, because we encounter it no less than four times. You see, the, the feeding of the 5,000 is the only pre-crucifixion miracle to be recorded in all four gospel accounts. You know, sometimes two or maybe even as many as three of the gospel authors will tell of a particular miracle or an event. But this is the only miracle that all four authors just had to include in their accounts. So we encounter it again and again and again. So we know the story, right? Jesus has been preaching and teaching. And then he feels compassion for all of those folks who have been out there listening to what he's got to tell them. So he tells his disciples, go feed them. And of course, the disciples are just dumbfounded by all of this because they know that they don't have that kind of food. They don't have that much food available. In fact, after they look around, they discover that all that they have is five little barley loaves, which is kind of the least expensive kind of bread. Basically, it's poor people's bread. And two small fish. And they look out there, and there's 5,000 men plus women and children. Well, ain't no way five little loaves and two little fish can feed that kind of crowd. We can do that kind of math. The gospel authors all knew that. And they also knew that their readers could understand that too. That, that kind of thing is just simply impossible by human standards. People just can't do that. But that's just the point. We are shown this amazing miracle as a means of informing us, you and I, that God can and God will do those things that are just utterly impossible for humans to accomplish all on their own. It's a miracle. It's an amazing miracle. However, even as we ooh and awe over this miracle, we need to realize something else, something important. And that is that the feeding of all of those people, 5,000 men plus women and children, was not the main event. As spectacular as it was then and as it is to us even to this day, the feeding of all of those people who, as Matthew told us, ate until they were full and then they had 12 baskets of leftovers, it's an amazing occurrence. But that miraculous occurrence was not the main event. It was, in reality, an appetizer. Something to catch our attention, something to keep us involved, and something to show us this tiny little bit of what is to come. Because when you compare this event, the feeding of the 5,000, as spectacular and as mind-boggling as it is, when you compare that to what God is going to do, oh yeah, the feeding of the 5,000 pales to appetizer status. The truth is that feeding over 5,000 people one meal and even filling every single one of them full using just five little loaves and two small fish and then having 12 big baskets of leftovers, that event, as, as spectacular as it seems to us, absolutely cannot compare with what God has prepared for us, which is to forgive the sins of every single one of us who will believe in Jesus Christ. And then the subsequent resurrection of every single one of, of these forgiven people to a new and perfect life where their every need will be fully met, not for just one little meal, not for just a day or two or even just a few years, but our every need will be met for the mind-boggling, absolutely limitless expanse of eternity. Eternity. We we can't even begin to measure, much less fully understand how, how big that is. 
nonetheless, it exists. The forgiveness of sins and resurrection to eternal life is the main course that God, our master chef, has prepared for us free of charge. All of the other miracles that God has performed on this earth, as spectacular and as wonderful as they are, all of those miracles are in reality simply appetizers whose purpose is to show us the grace and power of our almighty God who can and who will completely satisfy our greatest hunger which is to know that we will always have life with him in perfect peace. So on this day, and on the days to come, as you visit or, or revisit those miraculous stories of God that we see recorded in our Bible, see them for what they are, and know that those events are appetizers. Let their amazing details open your hearts and open your minds to what God has prepared for you and is going to serve to you. You see, the main course, resurrection to a perfect and eternal life, has been prepared for you. And it is yours for the asking. Praise be to God. Will you pray with me? Almighty and gracious God, we come to you on this August day with grateful and, yes, anxious hearts. We are grateful for all that you have done for us because we know that all that we have, all that we hold dear, it comes from your boundless grace and your amazing generosity. But even as we give thanks for those things, we confess that we live in times when the world seems to be spinning out of control all around us. The coronavirus, as well as so many other diseases, are bringing such hurt to our hearts and fear into our lives. We struggle to know what is best to do. We are confronted with so much information, some of which is contradictory. We need help, so we turn to you. Gracious God, speak to our wounded, weary, anxious spirits today. Remind us of your power that is greater than all things. Remind us of your love and your grace that can and that will bring us through these times of trial. Help us to have such confidence in your goodness and power that we may devote more and more of our attention to helping our neighbors, whoever, wherever they are. We pray for them now. We pray for your healing power to be poured out in full on all who are suffering from illness or injury. Those who are hurting in body or in spirit, we pray for your help for them. We pray that all who hunger in body or spirit may be fed, and in these difficult and anxious times, we pray for, for the safety and the health of all who are working so hard to care for us in the midst of this pandemic. Be with them. Protect them from harm. And all of this we bring to you today in the name of our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And now, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to end this time together, in order to go forth into the world, I invite you to join me in our prayer for going forth. 
Creator, Redeemer, God, be with me as I go out into the world. Open my eyes and my heart to the opportunities that you provide for me to serve you and to love my neighbors. Daily, give me the wisdom and courage that I need to be an effective servant. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.